Friday, those crews tried to put a, a clamp on this pipe. Today, instead, they just replaced a 10 foot section of it, put a brand new one in. They say that woman was jogging down this very path and suddenly a man came from behind, grabbed her by her hair and wrestled her to his car. And I wanna show you what they've been looking at. This is a metal warehouse that was just next to the canvas. You see this, this is steel that was blown over, not just blown over, but bent. Tim Pierce there talking uh, about the situation going on. I wanna show you real quick as well. He mentioned we're at that northbound uh, rest area. That's a shot of what traffic looks like right now. We had seen some police there along the interstate. There was a helicopter that had been overhead. It left the scene. I don't know if that was because of a change in the situation or simply to refuel. Coleman police here right now, and we actually have, Chris, if we can pan over one group right here. They're waiting just in case. They came all the way out here. They've got their car ready. This, this has been the main culprit, has been hail still hours after it fell here. And the damage is really not here on the side. It came from above. And now already we are hearing reaction from people in the Birmingham community. I'm joined by Representative John Rogers from Birmingham. And Mr. Rogers, you have already been hearing from people in the community who are frankly not happy with this decision. And, and this is where the price of Hurricane Michael can truly be seen. This field's been harvested. And all of this cotton would have been harvested too if the winds from Hurricane Michael had knocked it to the ground. Across this part of the coast, landmarks have literally been wiped off the map, or in the case of the El Governor Motel, so damaged you can barely recognize it. Brenda, Steve Marshall is hoping that his first campaign victory keeps him in the job that he's currently serving in, at least for another four years. He survived a primary runoff as well as personal tragedy to get where he is tonight. With practice and the sense of smell only a dog can have, they're able to literally pinpoint where a drug or a bomb has been hidden. This is where some of the worst damage was, but still, even about 10 miles beyond that, there are still people, even today, who don't know when or if they'll be able to return to their homes. Earlier today, there was a sense of calm that was throughout this area of Gulf Shores, despite the fact that thousands are now without power. Many, in fact, were on this very beach that's almost difficult to stand on now. Everybody's amicable. Everybody's exchanging information, <laughs> trying to figure stuff out. You, made your stuff in you know, what can you do? Some at this exit decided to sleep. Others <laughs> made music. But nobody was moving Thursday along I-10 in Florida's Panhandle. I was going to try to roll it through, but got the exit 174, they shut it down. Michael's winds strong enough to make the interstate impassable, more than 60 miles from where the storm made landfall. Some were more prepared than others. We got a cooler of water and some snacks and a little beer if it gets bad. Gas stations in the dark were able to sell food, but not precious gas. Just after one o'clock this afternoon, the westbound lanes of the interstate were finally reopened, providing much needed relief to the people who spent hours waiting along the interstate. It was music to these people's ears. In Gadsden County, Florida, Stephen Quinn reporting. A question. Y'all believe in Santa Claus? And a simple gesture. Well, Y'all stop by there and get you something to eat. Can make anyone believe. You are Santa Claus. That's all we this got. This is all the money in our <laughs> name. Uh, literally. Well, I like helping people. Southside police officer Ray Cumby has been in law enforcement for 25 years. This is probably the best part of it, is trying to give somebody something that they can use. For police, pulling someone over can be dangerous. The way I look at it, they know everything about me, and I know nothing about them. But today, Cumby is armed with gift cards, ready to arrest someone right into the Christmas spirit. So whether it's a mother who's trying to get to her child or a couple that literally has pennies to their name, when they see this behind them, <laughs> their last thought is about Christmas. I was actually scared. <laughs> I was worried I did something wrong. On this rainy day, Stephanie Brown's car doesn't even have all its windows. We like to give stuff out sometimes other than tickets. Thank you. You helped me a lot. Now I can go buy my daughter some toys. Just for a Christmas present. Coosa Sweet. Christian coach Kenneth Hallmark isn't ashamed to admit he plans to re-gift. Actually, I'm going to take my five seniors out. I'm going to buy them a gift because this right here, I didn't expect it, so why not? What do you think of this idea? I think I like it. I hope you keep it up. In Southside, Stephen Quinn, ABC 3340 News. Drive through Mexico Beach, it's hard to believe anyone survived, but they did. 280 people were in Mexico Beach when Hurricane Michael made landfall. 
The city's mayor tells us so far everyone is accounted for. I'm shocked. Uh, I've heard talk to people that stayed that were on the in, a, in the Highway 98 motel who swam out, a guy that, that he was able to get in the boat. Hal Summers says he's one of the lucky ones. Within three minutes, it was already up to my chest. And then two minutes later, it got to my neck, and then I decided, I made the decision that we had to get out, we had to go to the roof. Summers was in his house with his cat and 74-year-old neighbor. Did you worry you weren't going to make it? Yes, a couple of times. A couple of times. I mean, standing out, sitting outside, standing on a rail, holding on a gutter. Cell signal in Mexico Beach is out. Those who survived were desperate to let loved ones know they were alive. Talk to my mom. Sorry. Tuesday night. What do you think they're thinking right now? Probably the worst. They've probably seen the pictures. You know, it's hard not to. Sorry. On a day full of immense sadness, some good news. Summers was finally able to reach his parents by satellite phone to let them know he was alive. Now I can breathe. In Mexico Beach, Florida, Stephen Quinn. We're picking enough to do some serious damage as it's done to these cars. We've had no reports yet of injuries. We did talk to the EMA earlier as they were working through this area. There are some reports of damage near the jail as well as some of those areas around here.